Once your kids have grown up and left home, you're presented with a really unique opportunity to once again design a lifestyle that's all about you. Today we've traveled to the Gold Coast to meet one couple who have built freedom back into their lives by going off the grid and going tiny. G'day Kev. Hey Bryce, how are you doing mate? Welcome to uh, sunny Queensland mate. Thank you very much. Hi Hello, Jen, lovely to meet you. you. What an absolutely incredible parking spot you have found for your tiny house. Yeah, we're pretty lucky. Thank you. Absolutely. Can you tell me a little bit about how you actually ended up here on this property? Uh, it's a friend of ours who's got a total of eight acres. You know, basically doing nothing, and we put the suggestion to him. Planted the seed anyway. We took him out for dinner. Yeah, we and then... We bribed them. Yeah, <laughs> bit of sweet talking. Yeah. And then he goes, oh, I've got a bit of land. Why don't you come and do what you want to do here? So that's basically it. A tiny house with million dollar views. And you're definitely capitalizing on those by building this lovely big deck around the house as well. Mm. Oh, definitely, without a doubt. I mean, yeah. for us, it was all about the outdoors. You know, we want to live tiny, but also bring like, the outdoors in. So yeah, it was just perfect. It is always gonna be a deck. And I can see that you're making plans for a bit of an awning here as well in the future. Yeah, we're gonna need the shade because we found, even though it's not actually summer yet, the sun comes up and hits the glass doors and heats up the house straight away. So we need that shade, definitely. Yeah, and you've got this giant sliding entrance door as well. So when this is right opened up, you're virtually gonna double your living space here, aren't you? Yeah, we will, yeah. Obviously with that view, like it would be stupid to block the front off and just put a normal front door in. So that was the plan right from the beginning. As soon as we walked up here, saw the land, that's the way we're facing open up with bifolds. So how big is this tiny house? So we've gone the full 10 metres long by three metres wide. We wanted to go large, I tiny. I wanted the maximum. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so basically it was yeah. all, all to do with the lounge area, you know, just feeling comfortable and be able to stretch out. One of the great things about this tiny house is you both actually built this yourselves, didn't you? Can you tell me a little bit about that? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, we did, yeah. You know, we're smiling now, but... <laughs> You know, we... When we're still married. <laughs> well, that's a plus. Yeah. Uh, it is, yeah. Just, just. We'll have a go I'm at pretty it. hands on. We'll have yeah. a go at anything, yeah. won't we? So, so look, let's I'm do it. I'm a good labourer. <laughs> Before we started the project, we did so much research on your channel, on you know everybody's channels about building, and thought, okay, well, this is going to bring us closer together. You know, it's going to be amazing because all these people <laughs> that we've seen that've been doing self builds. You know, they're just like smiley just and happy. Smiley, happy, and it's just an amazing experience. Yes, it was an amazing experience. It was, it, but it was hard work as oh, well. Yeah. yeah, we actually celebrated our thirtieth wedding anniversary last year, so we've been married a long time. But yeah, I feel like we've been through about six months of marriage guidance. <laughs> <laughs> we had about five, five or six walk-off sites. <laughs> But having said that, it's, you know, just an awesome experience. It's a life-changing experience. It just makes you feel invigorated. It, it really does, does you yeah, know, like you... gives you a new, new lease of life. Well, I am very excited to go inside and check out your handiwork. Absolutely, yeah, feel free. <laughs> All right, let's take a look. Wow, you definitely get a tremendous sense of space standing in this tiny house, don't you? Yeah, lovely high ceilings, yeah. I just like things to be like open and spacious and that's why we've kept the walls really light and the, obviously the ceiling light. And even with the fans and that, it gives you like that whole airy feel into the house. So yeah, pleased how it turned out. Now these fans, I'm guessing, are essential elements in this tiny house because here in Queensland, it really can get pretty hot, can't it? It can do. I mean, uh, you know, obviously we've been here quite a long time now, about 11 years. Uh, so we've acclimatised, but it does get hot, it does get humid. Uh, we're going to see how we get on with the fans. If it gets too much for us, then we're going to look at alternative cooling, whether that be aircon or um, mobile unit. But of course, one of the challenges to the air conditioning, I'm guessing, in your setup is you're totally off the grid here in this tiny house, aren't you? So we are, that's yeah. a big draw on the power, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. With the aircon, it will be. Uh, we've been using the solar power now for around about four weeks now. And we're using roughly about 15% of the battery storage. So we're using minimal power as of what we've got at the moment. So, you know, we've got that uh, luxury to expand if we need to. 
So tell me about the solar system that you're using. So we've got solar panels up on the roof. Uh, each of those are 300 watt each. Um, we've got four batteries and each of those carry 390 amp hour each. And what about your water storage here? Uh, water storage is uh, off grid as well. So we've got a 5,000 litre tank that we've got. And uh, all the rainwater off the roof goes directly into that. Out of that into a filter system and then through the taps and showering and washing. This area is actually in drought now though, isn't it? How are you faring through that? Yeah, it is in drought, but having said that, when it rains, it rains and we just basically get the tank topped up very, very quickly. So we don't waste any water at all either. Yeah. There's a big um, water storage underneath. All our shower and um, washing up water goes into that and that gets used for all the garden. So no water comes into the house that doesn't get used yeah. twice. Now, tell me about this lounge. This is such a welcoming looking area. Basically, we did a priority list and almost number one was a comfortable sofa because we just got to have a really comfortable sofa where we can lounge out and watch TV or just look out at the view, read a book. So that took quite a while to find actually, didn't it? Did, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. All the shelves were all just made up by ourselves. So we just got plumbing pipes, just painted them ourselves put the timbers on um, because I had to bring all my books, of course. Probably uh, a third of your books. No, <laughs> no, I sneaked a few more in. <laughs> uh, had to have a wood burner because even though we are in Queensland, it does get cold up here in the winter and I love a fire. And obviously we've got plenty of timber that we can use. The dogs had to fit in as well. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, we've made sure they've got like a little comfortable area to sleep in, which they love down there, I don't absolutely they? love it, yeah. 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 And then look at this gorgeous kitchen. I absolutely love all of this wooden cabinetry. Yeah, we were really lucky actually. We picked up an absolute bargain with the kitchen. So other than having to cut it in so that it went over the wheel arches, it's completely freestanding and came all put together. So literally that was the easiest part of the whole build. You've got a lot of storage in this kitchen, don't you? Yeah, probably more than we needed, really. So <laughs> I didn't realise how much I'd be able to downsize because we've got three kids. And obviously, whenever I cook dinner, it's usually like a huge amount of people and their partners. So I had so many saucepans and plates and that. But literally, we've just bought one set of saucepans, six plates, cups, knives, forks and that. And half the cupboards are empty, really. So you've got three kids, but they obviously don't live here with you, do they? No, they're all adults. How great, though, that you've been able to build a home that can still entertain all of your kids when they do come over. Oh, yeah. definitely. They're, they're a massive part of our life, you know. And even though we built this for ourselves, it was in mind that, you know, we, when we had the kids around and their partners. And, and grandkids. And grandkids, hopefully. <laughs> Eventually. Yeah. <laughs> that we could, you know, we could have everyone around and enjoy the way we live. The cooker there, that just runs on gas, does it? Yeah, completely gas. It does, yeah. yeah. A little bit of a cock up with that. With the salesperson, uh, I explained that I wanted everything 100% gas. And then uh, we went to do some toast and <laughs> kept clicking the button, turned the gas, but it wasn't, wasn't firing up. So then I had a look underneath and it's a heating element. Oh. A little bit disappointed, but having said that, going back to the solar again, the storage and the power that we've got copes with toast. So <laughs> that's the story with the stove. It's brilliant. Fair enough. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you're not deprived of your toast because that could be a total deal breaker. Oh, absolutely. It? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, and that's the bathroom through there. It is, yeah. This looks big. Yeah, it was a bit of a priority for us. Not only is it our bathroom, it's also our dressing room because we haven't got any closed storage upstairs. So um, yeah, it needed to be big enough to get changed in as well. So in there, it's all of our clothes, all of our shoes, ironing board, towels, everything is in there. Yeah, and even a double basin vanity. That is a yeah. real luxury. It is a little bit, yeah. <laughs> and that's one of our um, heated discussion yeah. points. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, because I thought, you know, we're building tiny, you know, surely you can't go two basins. Big too... extravagant, yeah. Yeah, but it, you know, like fair play, it works really, really well. <laughs> you've obviously got the space for it in here as well, so why yeah, not? That's yeah, that's it. it. And then you've got the composting toilet. Now that is a great help with saving with the water, isn't it? Oh, absolutely, yeah. It was one of our main Major concerns with the composting toilet because we've never experienced anything like that before. A little bit of money spent on it, but well worth it. Well, 
Should we check out the sleeping loft and Absolutely. see what we've done upstairs? Absolutely. This is, again, a very spacious sleeping loft. It's actually higher than we thought it was going to be. It's so hard to tell when you're actually building. Even with just the steel mezzanine on, we didn't really realise that we were going to have this much height until we got the floor down and everything. But yeah, it's great. So this tiny house, you're actually within the legal height limit? We are, yeah. We purposely made it, you know, just below a uh, legal limit. Uh, to give us that flexibility. So how long have you been living in the home now? It's about um, four weeks. I yeah, think this is our weeks. fourth week. So. <laughs> so you're fresh in here. Yeah, yeah. And we're still, you know, sort of looking at uh, changing little bits and pieces. We've still got a little bit of work to do, obviously, with a little bit of touch-ups inside and uh, especially outside as well. You know, we want to get that right. We want to put vegetable patch in. Yeah, so it's just little things. And nice to, I'm sure, take a little bit of a break after the tremendous amount of work of actually mm. building your home. Wow, well, yeah. Yeah, we were a little bit shattered by the time we finished. So yeah, it was a massive release to actually move in. So you've obviously done all of the labor on this project yourself. And when you can do a project as a DIY project, it dramatically reduces the budget. Can you tell me what you did actually end up spending on this house? Kev can exactly. <laughs> well. She thinks so, but uh, <laughs> I have kept record receipts all the way through, but to date we've spent around about 54 grand so far. And that price, does that include all of your off-grid setup as well? That does include nine grand of solar. Yeah, wow. the, yeah. the water tank as well, oh, the which water tank. we yeah, found was... on Gumtree. Yeah. So um, we've made a lot of savings, which has kept that budget really low. It's quite fun as well, because in a way, you've actually got a business that suits a tiny house on wheels, don't you? Do you want to tell me about that? Yeah, yeah so we've actually got a vintage caravan, 50 years old, that we turned into a juice and smoothie bar. Um, so yeah, we work in a tiny space. We live in a tiny space. It's, yeah, sort of knock-on effect. It's fantastic. We just travel all over the Gold Coast, up to Brisbane, down to Byron, festivals, markets. Yeah, I love it with the business as well. We want to do something that we wanted to do and that we were passionate about. And healthy lifestyle was all our passion. And uh, we combined the two and said, right, okay, well, let's, let's do something that we want to do. So we worked out the bare minimum and what we needed to earn. And then we said, right, okay, we'll go for it. We flipped our week over, didn't we? Yeah, so yeah, our, yeah. our working week is Saturday and Sunday and we get Monday to Friday off. So basically we just flipped what we normally did. So yeah, fantastic. There's so many people out there who I am sure would be so envious of that kind of lifestyle and that flipped around work week, but this really is a lifestyle that you've worked to engineer yourselves. And the tiny house and this more minimalist lifestyle, that's definitely part of that ethos, isn't it? Yeah, it was always the plan. Now we're at that point where we want to actually do something with that time. So by living in a tiny house, we're going to be able to take off um, go traveling. We haven't got bills or rent to pay or anything. So it's all part of the lifestyle really. Literally, we just needed to find a way where we could have more time and work less. We're empty nesters and now it's time for us to have a little bit more freedom financially and time wise. The time is the most important thing in your life. Being able to spend time with the people that you love, doing the things that you love. It just gives you a whole new outlook on life. And you know what? The change is easy, it really is. And it's, uh, it's almost like a breath of fresh air as well. So once you make that change or you start on that road, mm. it's, just, it's just liberating, it really is. You have both done such a beautiful job in building this home and I'm sure you're both really happy now just to sit back, relax and enjoy this wonderful space. Thank you so much for sharing it with me. Thank you, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Within these walls, Kev and Jan have built so much more than just a home. They've built a whole lifestyle that's filled with more travel, more adventure and more financial freedom. This couple may now be empty nesters, but this home and their future are both filled with promise. <laughs>